Hey guys, Stealth here. Today we're looking at Transport Fever's pathing system. This is the path system that you can use to have multiple trains running on one track. Or two tracks, depending on how much capacity you have and how much money you have to expend something. Now, I have a small rail line set up between Everett in the south and Boston towards the middle of the map here. I'm currently only running one train. And what I want to do <coughs> is just keep the same capacity of 13, so I don't want to expand my train into having more passenger capacity. But I want to make sure that there's more trains running on the same rail line. You can do that by using signals. If I were to add another train now, they would get themselves into trouble. If I just buy another train and put that on the route, they're going to run into each other and they're going to be looking at each other asking who's going to budge first. But since they either have nowhere to go, none of them will start to move. You can see that the train that I just ordered is still sitting in the depot waiting for a free path. There's no path because the other train is occupying the whole rail line. Now you should be looking at the rail line in Transport Fever as a segment of rail, which means that since there is no sort of signaling between these two stations, this is one segment. This can only be used by one train. If I start to add signals, you start to make multiple segments of this rail line. I'm going to add these on both sides. This is not recommended generally, but this is what happens if you only use one rail line. This is how it's not supposed to be done. I'm putting these on one side of the track for the train that's coming from the south and one from the north. Now, this is enough to demonstrate how it can go wrong. This train is now starting to move out. He thinks, hey, look, there's an empty segment of train track ahead of me, so I can start moving. The other train has the exact same idea. It is still looking at a free segment, which is the segment ahead of it up until this signal marker. So it can continue to go there until there is another train occupying this segment. Fortunately, these things won't crash into each other, but this is where things go wrong they don't have any sort of way to pass each other. I'm going to send this one back to the depot in order to make sure that we have a bit of room for this guy to keep going because he's already carrying passengers. Now the first and uh, cheapest way of having two trains on one rail line pass each other using signals is to add a small bypass segment. This is not generally how I use it because laying tracks is just so cheap that you can immediately double up. But this is one way that you could do it. You make a small split off section and then you reconnect it. Make sure that trains always drive on the right side of the track. This is automatic. This is something that they do normally. I'm going to delete these signal markers because they're only going to get our trains into trouble. Don't, whoops, that was the train itself. We don't need that to happen. So these things are gone. And finally, these two. Let's see, where's my train off to? Because I think I deleted a bit of track. No, train's fine. Alright, now, a train is going to try and follow this path. <clears throat> you can see that it is currently taking the straightest path, which is immediately through this end. Now if it's coming from Everett in the south towards Boston in the north, I want it to take this side track. For that we're going to set up one of these things, a waypoint. I'm going to set that on the secondary path and I'm going to add it as a substation of Everett. So now that these trains can pass each other. But it's still classed as one section of rail because there's simply no signaling. So we're going to add a few of those. If I add a signal here, the train is going to check if there's a free path in front of it and it's going to run itself um, right up until the point where there's no free path anymore. So until this signal goes red. So this is not where you put it. You put it right over here. Because the train is allowed to move up right up until the split or until the rejoining of the line, provided that there is no other train occupying this trail section. Similarly, I'm going to do it on this end. And this will allow the trains to actually get on the same rail line together. Watch this. This one is now heading out to the station, which means that he just cleared 
this last section of track. A train section, or a train station, is counted as a separate section of track, in a way. What happens now is that this train is going to wait until the next segment is clear. The segment currently runs from the train station to this position. So what happens now is that the train that just departed the station is going to merrily wait here until the next section, which is from this marker all the way up until Boston, is clear. It's not clear because this train is still making its way there and occupying this entire segment of track. So it's going to arrive in Boston, it's going to stop there, it's going to pick up the passengers, we're going to head south again, and once that one has passed this section, once this area is clear, this train will then once again be allowed to move up. Let's see where you at, he's coming south. <coughs> There's the train, now he's clear to go. And now we're using two trains on one section of track, or on one rail line. The problem is that it's not very efficient. Because now, the problem is in reverse. In the sense that this train is now going to have to wait here. So once again, we're running into a bit of trouble, as this train is going to be sitting here for quite a while, as the other train makes its way all the way to Boston. So what you could do, is add yet more of these uh, bypass sections, or these sections where these trains can pass each other. So I'm going to add another one, like that. We're going to set up the signaling, one there, and one here. And now the train automatically, actually I don't even need that waypoint, the train automatically understands that if this section is clear, it'll use it. Now let's see who's going to get there first. I think it's going to be the train of the north. This one is starting to move, and this one's also starting to move. They're going to converge on this position. Whoever gets here first is going to have to wait. There we go. He is first to the section. He's going to have to wait a bit. The other one passes, section is cleared, and he gets to move on again. So now we have much, much less waiting time. And this will allow your trains to just consistently keep going without really having to wait for one another. Now. Imagine that this track is going to be seeing a lot more traffic. You want to ramp this thing up so that a train arrives pretty much every, let's say, every two minutes instead of every three or four. So we're going to have to double up on the trail track, on the um, train line. So we're going to lay double tracks. I'm going to split these off as soon as possible. So preferably right after this one joins the other train line. That's the one from the depot. Gotta make sure that it's a nice split so the trains can understand to use it. There we go. Now I won't be needing this thing anymore. And I won't be using that thing anymore. I'm gonna delete all of these redundant signals before they start to create confusion, either among the trains or among you as a builder of the rail line. We should be running up right into the next overpass, there we go. So we're going to delete the signal, we're going to delete the cross up. Delete that bit and that one. Moving north. Don't make this train stay, or don't make this track go all the way into the station. And don't double up on the train tracks, because it doesn't work. If I double it, and I then add this track, then the train's gonna be all confused and it won't use either track. So what usually works best is just having one section there, which joins up together right in front of the station. That's what I found to work best. Once again, I need this train to use both elements or both sides of the track. So once a station is occupied, I need the other train, if it's coming in soon, to wait there. And now it's not using that second track yet. It's because there's no signaling on this end. If a train is waiting for this station, or if a train is already occupying this station, I need the other one to wait. So there we go. And now, especially with two trains, we're not going to have anywhere near as much of a problem. This one does not have any passengers to pick up currently, but let's suppose that there's 60, 70, 80 people waiting there. 
This one zips up north, the other one comes down south. And right now we actually have basically two sections of track. Especially down the long element. So we have the section that starts to run from the split off all the way north. All the way until we come up to this signal. And vice versa. It starts there and runs all the way south. Now this works if I have two trains. Because now they're not going to get in each other's way. If I however add more trains, we're going to run once again into an issue. Because now again, since we only have two segments of trail track, or uh, rail track, this one is still waiting for a free path. So what we need to do is divide this large segment into smaller sections, and that's why you use the signals. I usually just put them at uh, pretty even distances among the track. And every time you do a double segment, so one on one end, one on the other end, you create a new section of train, or a new section of rail, that the train can use. So now it doesn't have to wait all the way up until it's over there. And as you can see, the train can now depart. It's now going to uh, look one section ahead. So currently it's in this section and it's now looking to see if this section is clear, if there's no train in there. If there is, this one's going to go red automatically, you don't need to adjust that, and the train will stop. If it's green, he's just going to continue going right up until he runs into a red signal. As you can see, he is about to run into trouble as the other train... There we go. Oh, never mind. At this point, it's all good, because he's not actually occupying any other element of track. So he can just make his merry way towards the station in the north here, Boston. Now the other train is also making its way back and since we have this signal here, this one from this signal all the way south until, uh, where is it? And this one is classed as one section of track. And once again if you have just three trains running on here it's all perfectly fine. You don't really need to worry. It is, however, a good habit to make sure you have as many sections as possible, and I don't mean creating a section, let's say, like that, because usually your train's going to be bigger than that, so that doesn't make any sense. Make them, let's say, about the size of a train, a standard train. And let's see, that should be the last one. Now I have quite a few segments here. This one could use another one. They're pretty evenly spaced out along my train track here. What I can do now is throw on pretty much as many trains as I like. So we're going to buy, what's this, five trains by now. And we're going to all set those to the route, which is Everett Boston. They're continually going to check if the section ahead of them is clear. Now this one's going to have to wait. He's moving out. He can now join his, or get on his way towards the station. That clears this section from that marker to the train station so that he can now depart the depot. And now we're going to have trains on every section. Here we go. The next section is cleared as the train is waiting and a train station is automatically signaled although you don't see them. They are there. He's going to continue heading north. I still have two trains waiting there. We're going to have one waiting because he cannot occupy the station at the same time. So we're going to have to wait until this one, correction, this one, and then that one is cleared. And then he can finally continue his way. Now this is a pretty um, unusual situation in the sense that normally you won't have this many trains running on one track. You're probably more likely to go with larger trains, which more capacity. And they are still pretty close together you can see that is starting to cause trouble. Especially once I departed all five trains from the depot. That's when it got pretty busy on the train track here. Now, this section is still um, a bit too much of a weight for me. I want to see if I can adjust that a little bit. So we're going to potentially make this thing a bit longer and try to join them up as close to the station as possible. We're going to have to adjust the entry point from the depot a bit for that. Let's see, easiest is to split it off from the station. There. 
and then we can reconnect to the depot. Once again, check your signaling. Make sure that the trains do use both sides. But now this one is no longer the last one. I can add another signal. Because the train doesn't have to wait there. It can wait right here, which is almost immediately from the station. Make sure that your signal in front of a station is before the split happens, so that the other train can still depart. If you put your marker over here, which currently isn't even possible because it's so close, the train which is in the station cannot depart. And that can be a problem, especially with longer trains and smaller segments. But for now, all of these trains are um, happily split out across the route. They're all moving. They are not having to wait for one another too much. Unless the station is occupied, of course. And I gotta say that Boston and Everett are probably pretty happy with the amount of transportation. Because there's a train coming in every 46 seconds instead of every 4 minutes. Now yes, this is a bit of an investment. But it is uh, definitely very handy in getting the amount of usage for your line up. Because the more often a train is going to depart the more likely people are to pick a train instead of picking a uh, car or a bus. They just like the frequency and um, it may not make you as much money because you're paying for every single vehicle, 168k a year in this situation. But most of these are still making me a profit. Let's see how much the line's making. 318,000 this year. And that is with eight trains on just one double section of track. Now you can use this system of signals for virtually anything. You can make sure that, for example, with one train station, and I wouldn't, or with one uh, track per station, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. You could set up a, sixth, or a system that also goes towards Tulsa. So say that I want to add Tulsa, I don't want to expand my train station for whatever reason. Maybe there's buildings all along it and I cannot actually upgrade it. In that case, we're going to have to split this one off. Make sure it's on the outbound track, which is that one. If I uh, tell the train to go off that way towards Tulsa, it's going to run into an issue. Because there's a signal here, which means there's going to be a train waiting here. The train that's off to Tulsa cannot make it, so it won't work. Make sure you split them off from right about here. And now we gotta make sure that they're actually, there we go. We're gonna set up one track to Tulsa. It's just going to be a single line. Uh, I'm not going to go very economical on this one. It's just an example. One million, yeah, just build a long bridge there, why not? <clears throat> All right, we need to make a terminal station here. Preferably where we can hook it up. This is far from ideal. But I hope it will connect. Nope, too much slope. I have to reverse on the building construction there. There we go. Now, what's going to happen now is that a train that comes in from Tulsa is going to have to wait until there's a free section. And we need to make sure that it's going to arrive on the right track. Literally, on the right side of the track. So we're going to have a route from Everett to Tulsa. Watch what happens. Since it's only able to take this track back, it's going to run all sorts of trouble for the trains that are already coming into this station. So we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. We need to make a small split off here. And then reconnect that to the already existing inbound line to the station. This is better. Now over here I want to make sure that the train that arrives first is going to get priority. So I want to make one signal here. I want to have one signal there for the train that's coming down from Boston. I want to give the train that's um, outbound towards Tulsa priority. So a train that is on this section is going to have to wait. That's why the signal is there and I'm not going to move it. So now we're going to add one, uh, correction, we need, just need to add a train. Uh, we're going to go for another M300, and we're going to set you up on line 1, which is the Tulsa line. He's going to have to wait. You can see this train is now getting priority. That's because there's no signal here. 
If there was a signal here, this train would likely get priority. You can see the train here is waiting for a free path. Currently there's a train in the way. That won't take long. And immediately he gets out of the way. And there's no further issue. So with the signaling and a bit of clever laying of tracks, you can also make sure that you don't have to have um, eight train tracks in one station. It's more efficient if you can do it because you won't have too many trains interfering with each other. I mean, if you have the capability, then having a track that comes in from Tulsa and ignores everything else and goes directly into the station makes way more sense. This, if it wasn't for terrain, uh, for terrain alignment collisions, would be way more efficient. But if for whatever reason you cannot do that, then with signals you can still save the day. There we go, I can now just completely bypass that section. If I delete it, once again it immediately picks up the smartest path and uses the only signal or the only side available. And that's pretty much the risk to it. You can use this with passenger lines, you can use it with uh, freight lines. It's a system that is very very handy and it is um, most often that you need path signals and you don't really need waypoints. So path signals. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. Any questions um, on how to use this and where to put it in your game are going to be a bit more difficult. But any general level questions I can easily answer down there. So I hope this was useful and if it was, please give it a like. If you have any further questions, put those down below and I'll see you soon for more Transport Fever.